come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Stop right there. <laughs> Have you had a chance to spread the word about the Saturday Night Freak Show? Well, we're going to give you that chance. Please do. Go on over to wherever you found us and give us a star rating, a like, hit the subscribe button, because all of that stuff helps the Saturday Night Freak Show towards our goal of total world domination. We want you to be a part of it. Thank you very much. I'm just in awe right now of your introduction. <laughs> PSA ended. Actually, we should also tell the folks, find folks at home where they can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Set Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. <laughs> and on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. So here are your internet radio superstars. Toby. Michaela. Samurai Holly. And I'm Colin. <laughs> Sean is off on an expedition of self discovery this evening. Uh, so we're a movie review podcast, or we watch movies and then we talk about sure. them. Sure. Book club for movies, if you will. A book club, club for movies. That was a perfectly <laughs> apt uh, description. Love it. Uh, so tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. <sighs> what did we watch? God help us. We watched Samurai Cop. Samurai Cop from the year 1991. And no, I'm sorry. Really? Yes. No. Oh, yeah. and this movie yes. looks easily ten years earlier. This I know. came out uh, from the same year as Point Break. Yep. No. 90, he was wearing a T-shirt that said um, "Established 1991" at one point. Oh no! Oh yeah. my god! The calendar showed I think 1990 or 1991 at one yep. point too. So yeah, no, I was blown away. By 91. That. <laughs> Are we sure it didn't like sit on a shelf for like 10 years? Nope. 91. Oh man. Well, who was wow. responsible for this masterwork of cinematic fiction? A, I was going to say gentleman, but I don't think I can rightfully call him that. <laughs> a man by the name of Amir Shervin. Sure. Amir Shervin. Oh, shit. He's the director of uh, Killing American Style. He sure is, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only person to ever say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, if you're a fan of Killing American Style. No, I don't know. Uh, Holly was giving us the rundown of all the films he's made, and it's like, hey, what? No. So, yeah, apparently we fake. have a lot of work to do to acquaint ourselves with the uh, the oeuvre of uh, this fine filmmaker. <laughs> so, correct me if I'm wrong, but Samurai Cop was recommended to us. It was. This was a listener recommendation from Novatu Judoka. Oh, also, thank you. Also known as Johnny New Jersey. Oh, well, thank you very much, Johnny. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I do. I feel like we should have covered this a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, this seems like prime. No, I, I'm I, kind of surprised it I took com- this long. I completely agree. I requested that people give us recommendations, movies that you think to yourself, why haven't they done this on the freak show? <laughs> And I feel like he delivered. I really do. Yeah. So you requested this. I asked for. Pe- yes, I asked for this. Thanks. I did. <laughs> well, I mean, clearly, as you can probably tell, listener, we are still reeling from the experience. It's fresh. It, yes. Yeah, we just literally it yeah. just ended. The pain is fresh. It's right there. <laughs> Let's pour some salt in this wound. I mean, or some hot grease. <laughs> <laughs> oh, touche. Yes. Too soon. Um, so this uh, this movie, what, uh, what what what's the broad strokes? What it was this about? I don't know. It was a, I, it was well, a samurai cop. Yeah. No, oh, okay. was it no, was it wasn't. Toby? No, it was wasn't it Toby's? Not. It was not. If there was one thing it wasn't, it was a samurai no, cop. This... I, t- I'm, I was telling Holly, I looked up, you know, because I wanted to go into this blind. I'd never heard of this movie, so I wanted to go into it blind, so I looked up just enough photos to share on our Facebook page. Uh, mm-hmm. Which is facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. There it is. So uh, I could, you know, tease that it was coming. And I found a, an image of this guy with sure. long hair, you know, flowing hold, locks. Flowing locks. Yes. Standing in the middle of the desert holding a samurai sword <laughs> in an attack position. I'm with like, crazy eyes. With crazy eyes. And you're like, clearly, you're like, this yes. movie is going to be awesome because this is about a samurai cop. 
It is. It's about a man who is known as <laughs> Sam Bradcock. Yeah. And, and you know he has a nickname because he told everyone to call him that. He's uh, one of those no, guys. It's, it's the Seinfeld T Bone episode. It is. Yeah. It's yes. what it is. Yeah. 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 That's call, what it call, is. Yeah. He told everyone to call him that. He gave yeah. himself that nickname. He uh, did. Well, he's a new cop. No, he's a he's a he's a, no, he's a transfer from yeah, San Diego. Yeah. yeah, so he's a renegade cop. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, it's real exotic yeah. going from San Diego to L.A. It's completely different. Apparently, uh-huh. you know? they have yep. samurais down in San Diego. <laughs> well, he trained with samurais in Japan, Michaela. That's how, right. How he speaks fluent Japanese that he never actually speaks in yep. the movie, but we're yeah. told this. He speaks yeah. fluent Japanese yet can't pronounce the main bad guy's name, which was Yakum. More? Yeah, well, I couldn't tell if he was doing that as a dig oh, or yeah. if he yeah. didn't actually know how to say. It's giving this movie too much credit to. Yeah, to... I... <laughs> what is it's katana? Not that cerebral. Mean? It means Jap- samurai sword. <laughs> Japanese, sword. Japanese, Japanese, Japanese sword. sword. No, it fucking doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so maybe a more pointed question is: I, I need to know who wrote this movie. Uh, you're you're gonna go back to the director for that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> Amir so Shervin explains a lot. Amir Shervin. Thanks, Amir. Mm-hmm. See, I think <sighs> that this movie is right there with like. I mean, as we were watching it, I guess it did put me in the mind that like the guy who is starring in this movie clearly wrote and directed this nope. as a <laughs> like vanity project, mm-hmm. and you said no, and I'm like, nope. what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? Really? Nope. Is the director in the movie somewhere? Nope. Hmm. He's not. I, what about his voice? His voice is in every scene of this goddamn movie. Really? <laughs> every single dub you hear is him changing his voice. Get the fuck I'm not out. kidding. Oh. That would explain pretty, why that one of the characters lot, has yeah. a oh, fucking robot yeah. voice yeah. early yeah. on. Basically, when, basically, they shot this entire movie without sound. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, no, you real. can tell. They really oh, yeah. did. Because, well, yeah, you can tell. Oh, no. You can fucking so tell. <laughs> so you can bad. fucking tell. But then when they did the, the dubbing, only like two people in the movie were able to come back to do the voiceover. Yeah. So he did literally almost every single voiceover. Poorly. Do we? Horribly. <laughs> do you know what the budget was for this movie? You know, I looked. Five bucks. I looked, uh, right? Yeah. I looked everywhere and I could not find a budget. I Because I that was like my one thing. I was like, I yeah. need to know this. I couldn't find it anywhere. Well, in some ways it's kind of, sorry, go ahead. I, I think the best looking thing in the movie was uh, Zadar's suit. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it was. It looked, and you will be. Not surprised to know that everyone wore their own clothes oh, in this yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and shot at their own houses yep. and whatever. And brought uh, their yeah. own cars. The most the way? Shot at their own shot. Oh. oh shot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know a good portion of this movie was shot in various rooms of the director's home and office. <laughs> mm-hmm. This does not surprise not, me. Not not surprising. Well, you're on a budget. These guys see that's why it's like, and I'm trying to like, how how hard do you want to be on this movie? This is a, like a group of people, probably, who are like, we're making a movie. Like, this is the most awesome fucking thing in the world because we've got a camera. And we've got a, we're making a movie. How many movies did he made prior to this one? The director? Yeah. Well, here's the list. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, but Quite where are few. we? Where are we in that list? Because this is '91, Sa- and he Samurai started Cup at the top. Yeah, Samurai Cups at the top. Those are all the movies he made previous. This is like what fifteen movies, maybe. Yeah, two, four, three, four, five, six, six. Okay. Well over twenty. All right. Well, I, over well 20. then, then you kind of lose your respect. Yeah. Over oh yeah. Twenty films. Over this guy 20. has made. Some of these have uh, Arabic names. I, I, I mean, oh, I don't know. Indian or something. He, he's or Persian. Yeah. Persian. He's okay. Persian. Okay. So he's a Persian filmmaker who made it to America with a movie called. Hollywood cop, well, because you do, right? Mm-hmm. In 1987. So 20 films. Listener, this does not seem like a movie made by someone who has ever made a movie before in their life. Never, oh. never, no, never, no. never. Yeah. I mean, God, I've no. seen, I've seen like, like student film projects that are leagues better than this movie. Oh, yeah. Like, like, hey, kids, stay in school because you're already doing better than this dude, you know? But I don't know how, how you describe it. The color changes from shot oh to shot. God, it was it's so orange, distracting. It's orange. It's blue. It's, well, it's have you guys yellow. ever? Yeah. Oh my god. Have you ever it, seen Game of Death? You know how, like, after Bruce Lee died, they had to use like chopped up footage from right. his other movies. Yeah. 
that's what this is like, but it's still the same people. Mm-hmm. It's not from different movies, but yeah, it looks yeah. like it's all from different yeah. movies. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, like, the, whoever the cameraman is, clearly they have no concept of, like, an exposure Mm-mm. meter because some stuff's about blown out, color crazy balance. white hot. Yeah. There's no color balance. Uh, they don't know how to color time it. For all we know, we're, they're using, like, different stocks. Like, that's what I'm wondering, why mm-hmm. you get that blue look, is because that's indoor stock. That they're using outdoors. Huh. I could be wrong, but I think they're right. mixing and matching like they're, huh. you know, <laughs> their film. Stocks. Isn't the version we watched? Didn't it say it was remastered from the thirty-five millimeter print? <laughs> this is the fucking oh, yeah. remastered version. This is the remastered version. Jesus Christ! Yeah, he he had like one type of film that he just used. Until it was gone. <laughs> and, there's, and there's scenes where like the camera's bouncing and not stabilized and shaking. There's right? scenes where it's out of focus. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. It's- A gloriously amateur. Enthusiastic, though, production. Enthusiastic? Can you feel the enthusiasm of the people? I feel the, the disdain from the actors. <laughs> I don't I know. Some of those through. actors seem super jazzed to just be in a movie. Yeah. Some of yeah. them. You know? Some of them. Yeah. No, I, I feel like the. Our, uh, our lead, our, our samurai cop, if you will, played by um, Matt Hannon. They're, oh, Matt Hannon? Matt Hannon. I, I really hope he starts doing convention circuits because I have a lot of questions. I really do. I really do, too. Um, who the fuck? Who is Matt Hannon? Um, he's, he's Matt Hannon. He's been Hannon. in this and yeah. Samurai Cop 2. Yeah. What? He's, That's a Samurai Cop 2? Oh, not? there's three. Colin. What? There's three. You're mm-hmm. kidding me. Kidding. Well, because this one probably has yeah. an ironic uh, cult following. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, no. Um, oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, it also has a uh, top build there on the list, uh, Robert Zadar. Yes. Mm-hmm. Who is the, uh, I mean, he's got like, a, well, it, it, he actually looks better with a beard. Mm-hmm. He does. He does. Yeah. Yeah. He, he looks does. good with the beard. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, he needs that beard. It um, kind of came, he's the maniac cop. He's, we, I was going to say, he's been on the freak show before with Maniac Cop. Mm-hmm. And, and Tango and Cash. And Tango and, and Cash. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a very square yeah, jawed. Uh, yeah, you know him when you see him. Yeah, there's jawed. no mm-hmm. mistaking him for anyone else. That's for no, sure. No, not possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, I know that I. I I read an interview with Matt Hannon and he was talking about how like there are there are scenes this, and watching it I could see it there are scenes when you can just see it in his face that he has such hatred for what <laughs> he's doing <like>, Matt Hannon <laughs> he, has, right he has such hatred for this movie as he's filming like he's speaking the lines but he is just so disgusted mm-hmm. by it because apparently when they were all signed on there was there was a script and they were told we're going to change this as we go. We're going to have some rewrites and not one goddamn word of the script changed. The director was very much say it exactly like oh. this. And it's evident in the scene where he, I think he says son of bitches, I think was how he said it. <laughs> like that's a very wise Zoe in approach. I was going to say, I was going to say it's got that, it's got that same, it, it's got that same feel as, as Tommy Wiseau where yeah. it's clearly, a singular so vision. It's, it's a singular mm-hmm. vision. It's someone who has not been in America their entire life, and they have a very specific idea of what American film and American characters yeah. would be like, and they're not willing to to vary from mm-hmm. from this image. Yeah, because like yeah. Uh, Tommy Wiseau was famously very obs- very obsessed with like American slang and turn of phrase. Yes, and you see that in this movie. You really oh, do, like to the nth degree. You really especially do. like phrases involving butt. Like how many oh, yeah. butt yes. phrases? Like yeah, I feel like I've got a club up my a butt, butt. Well, and it hurts. Well, and then I wrote down. <laughs> I gotta get it out of there. I wrote down because it was hilarious. Uh, they said what? Someone asked like, "Oh, we need information about something." And the um, one cop goes, "What information about my butt?" Like <laughs> <laughs> stuff like. There's a lot of That's that. That's a funny word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But. And and following along with with the Tommy Wiseau theme, I, there was also it was very clear that um, an um, an all American image was very important to him in this because mm-hmm. there were several characters that were very much described as like I'm an all American girl. I go to church every Sunday. Yeah. Like it came up several times, and I'm like, what is this this idea of having like this all American persona is very important to him in a movie about primarily Japanese characters. Right. <laughs> it was very odd to me. Well, see, and I feel like the, the Japanese part of it wasn't really researched at all. Not like, at uh, like, all. Like he had the vaguest idea of what a Japanese person was. He went, going yeah. into this he movie. went to a Japanese restaurant yeah. once and it's was like, like this oh, is cool. Samurai. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like yeah. the iconography says, of it oh, appealed oh, to him. Oh my but God, without, that really like, bothered me. 
Yeah. So he learned. I mean, it seems like this is a guy who learned everything that he knew about America, obviously, from movies, right? I'm guessing. Which feels a lot like 80s cop movies or cop TV Mm -hmm. shows or something like this is kind of what he absorbed and then didn't actually apply like how any of this fits in the real world. So he creates this like near I say uh, almost documentarian realism (laughs) in every scene. (laughs) That is generous. That's (laughs) wow. 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 The police captain, I love that guy. He's the guy with the club up his ass. He's like, that's it. You guys have cost me my job. So you, your badges, we're all going to go. Why don't, so I want you to go and take this guy down. I want to, don't, just don't arrest him. Just go and kill him. Kill them all. Yeah. Yeah. Then just come back here. We'll turn house. in your badge and we'll all go off together. There's a plan. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what the guy said. Yeah. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah. With that awesome synth score from oh. 1980s <laughs> video game. Games. Yeah, the director is obviously obsessed with Lethal Weapon. Right? Oh, obsessed. Oh, yeah. Hello. Like, the two characters look like fucking oh dollar store versions of oh my God. You know, Lethal That's Weapon. That's true, yeah. I didn't think yeah. about that. Well, I looked, was yeah. You didn't? About, no, I was thinking <laughs> yeah. about but the fact that he's got long hair is Riggs' is long hair, right? Right. But, and the yeah. billowy button-down shirts tucked into mm. the pants that was the yeah. style in the 80s, not the yeah. 90s so much. Well, yeah, so it was made. You see, in 91, you're still in that kind of... I think you're in the 80s. You're in the 80s, 80s, 80s yeah. hangover phase. That's but true. everything but, about it, the stonewashed jeans with the leather jacket and the long hair, I was like, this is so yeah. Mel Gibson, like, mm-hmm. unbelievably. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, funny black sidekick. Like, yeah. it's just so wanting to be Lethal Weapon. It's sad. Mm-hmm. It's just sad. Well, talking about the partner, so he's got, it's this, uh, you know, the white buff muscle bound dude with black long hair and then the uh, his part is African American partner mm-hmm. I thought like you know I'm sitting there watching the movie and I'm like they are really not giving this guy like any characterization at all I know yeah. nothing about his <laughs> nope. character he is just there to you know I mean he has some heroic moments which one are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> okay but I know I know I know a few things about Joe Marshall the samurai. Did cut. I hit that right? You did. Mm-hmm. Joe Mar- that was yeah. that yeah. was reaching right there. I was, was like, shit, that was reaching down in the fucking pit. <laughs> You're like something's gonna come up, Marshall. Okay. Yep. Uh, I know a little bit about him. I know that he comes from San Diego. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. I know he's a fucking chick magnet. Yo, uh, apparently, we'll get into that. We'll get yeah. to that. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, we'll get to that. He can't. He like he can't keep him off. You know, like they're just except for the nurse. Yeah. <laughs> well, but he had to har- <laughs> he had to harass her a little bit first before he. You know. Well, there was a consolation prize <laughs> yeah. there because the other nurse said like the desk was like making googly eyes at him when he walked in mm-hmm. and when he walked out. Mm-hmm. Um, I was gonna say I know some other things about him, but I know that uh, he's a sweet hearted man at heart he has a code of Where honor you get that he's worried about the drugs that these gangs are selling to our kids yeah. like and, he said and in the his, destruction and he's very, don't legit. forget the destruction you can't sell the, <laughs> the masters of destruction was it the merchants no. of destruction yeah. the destruction. merchants yeah. of destruction you're selling your drugs <laughs> and your destruction all over los angeles by the pallet yeah and you're hurting the kids he has this amazing speech. <laughs> it's like a yeah, it's an after school special. That's speech true. That comes out of nowhere. That all American GI Joe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got it. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's very right. patriotic. Uh, you know, uh, he's also uh, he has a code of honor uh, because when uh, now you know, is that a Japanese code of honor? Is that a cop code of honor? Is that a billowy hair code of honor? <laughs> yes. Yes, Thank you, Toby. You <laughs> That's the because when you're involved in a gunfight with someone and they run out of bullets, you still yeah. have a full clip, and they go, "What are you not man enough to fight me with a samurai sword? Yeah. You have to. You are compelled to then drop." No, your, it's like when it's like when you're fighting with your brother and you're like, "Time out!" and you have to time out. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> yeah, that's the code. Yeah, you have And to. also, when you're filled with murderous rage and about to behead somebody, and somebody says, "Joe, stop! You're a cop!" Immediately, you're like, "Oh shit! You're right. You're right. I forgot my profession. Mm-hmm. I am a cop. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can't kill this man." No, you killed everyone else, but yeah. not this guy. And that's why you have a partner. Uh, yeah, exactly. The conscience. Yep. You have to have the somebody right, to keep that, you a bulletproof conscience. That beautiful black Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> Love a it. A bulletproof conscience. <laughs> oh my God, we're getting to that. I know we're jumping around in this <laughs> because the movie matter. jumps it around. It does not matter. This yeah. movie is one big jump around. Yeah. The whole movie. What are you doing? I'm just saying something. Good. There you go. Okay, okay. lost okay. you for a second. Good. So. All right. 
We'll just There's a in. scene where <laughs> the the police they're involved in this shootout. I, which want, is... I want Colin to do my dubbing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? It'll be accurate to the movie. Can we? Colin? We'll just speed up the oh, Colin, I'll adjust the please. pitch. When <laughs> when we release this episode, can you dub all of us? Yeah. <laughs> can you just do all of our voices, please? Which one of you wants to sound like the robot? Dibs. I, Dibs. Okay. Toby's I was going to say, that seems like a Toby voice. <laughs> Dibs. Well, there's a fantastically dramatic scene where um, the, the one of the, the final bosses, there's like several until we get to, uh, no, I don't... to Robert Zadar. But, uh, Who wasn't a boss, but ends up being like yeah. the big bad, yeah. which I love. Right, he's not the, the boss. He's not the, the boss, boss of the but he's Yakuza, the big bad, yeah. It's great. A.K.A. the Katana. Uh, <laughs> The Yakuza, Which the is katana. Japanese for sword, apparently. Uh, <laughs> the, no, it's Japanese sword. Uh, it's it means Japanese sword. Japanese, that's yeah. sword. It, means it means Japanese sword. Just like, sword. you know how, like, sword means American sword? Yeah, you know, no, it's no, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Katana means yeah. Japanese yeah. sword. We're all there. We got We're it. saying that, but we don't know what katana actually means. Do we, what, do we know what? We should Captain Google this. Um, so... There's a, a, a very a, a tender moment. Well, no, a it's, tender well, moment. It's a moment of self-sacrifice. No, I don't know. Okay, uh, they're involved. There's a there's a standoff. Bad guy has hero's girl. Okay, uh, in the house. In the house. Sure. Mm. And the hero and his partner are armed, and they throw down their weapons to protect the girl. Yeah. And the bad guy shoots then and plugs the partner. Square in the stomach, <laughs> right in the stomach, right. I mean, like, right kablam, there. right? right we don't have like a squib. it, it might as it looked like a buttonhole, <laughs> yeah. It was, oh, so it was right in the squib. middle. I thought I saw yep. the black hole, in yep. the, yeah. It just looked like a black hole, yeah. Yep. Close there. But yeah, the uh, I saw like the little in his in his shirt, but that uh, I know where you're going, but that makes me think he was wearing a bulletproof vest since there was a hole but no blood. But they didn't address that. I know they didn't, oh. Toby. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> The guy falls on the floor. You're like, oh, no, they killed Frank. And then he gets up. And, and then he gets up. <laughs> Joe's like, hey, you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, just a bully. And it's that's fine. it. We will never talk about this again for the rest of the movie. Nope. Did and you, the hole goes missing. Did just you think that yeah. most people in this had, uh, let's see. I mean, how do you, uh, very strong constitutions, uh, you know, like uh, against lead. <laughs> yeah, sure. A tolerance, we'll say. <laughs> a tolerance. I mean, don't all people in LA have a tolerance for that? Isn't that a thing? You just can get shot like uh, fifteen hundred times before. Yeah, because it's like kabam, you get shot and blood squirts out. Then yeah. you can get the gun up and then kabam, you get shot again and you can get the you know. Oh yeah, nobody goes down with one shot in this movie. Mm-hmm. Nobody, not one damn person. Yeah. In fact, at one point they shoot someone in the neck and that just goes away. Yeah. <laughs> it does make it easier to yeah. saw his head off later, though. That's true. Yeah. That's a starting point. It's already there. I think we're applying more logic than actually existed in the movie, but. Yeah. Was this at the hospital slash hotel clinic? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With, right the, now, the with, with the all dentist office. right next to us. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're not kidding. No, I know. About- if somebody hasn't yeah. seen this, they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? We, we sound shot- psychotic if yeah, they have probably. not seen this movie. Because every scene seems to be, well, no, even in a scene, it seems to be shot at different locations. Mm-hmm. With, with yes. When a camera turns around, you are somewhere else. Yes. And it's very uh, disorienting. disorienting yeah. Yes, it is. Since we're in that building, can we talk about the nurse? Oh, we have to. <laughs> we have to. We have to talk about the nurse. Michaela, tell us about the nurse. Oh, so because he is the samurai cop is a chick magnet, and like he just can't help. Like they, the ladies just come to <laughs> they him. They flock to him, um, like Tom Selleck. You know, yeah, he has to beat him off. You know? Must be the wig. Uh, yeah. She, oh, we'll get to the fucking wig. <laughs> we will get to the fucking wig. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. They were having a flirty back and forth, and. She grabs his crotch and says, like, there's not enough there, makes a joke about, like, how the circumcision took too much off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, but, like, isn't, like, his third line to her, like, we should fuck or something like she that, said right? That she says that. that. She says that. Yeah. 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 This but, is how you meet people in L.A. is what I'm convinced the director yeah. thought. It's I like, really want to go to L.A. now. Yeah. Beautiful <laughs> nurses, because all the nurses are, you know, extremely beautiful, wander up and go, like, hey, what are you doing later? You want to fuck? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that's was essentially that's literally how the conversation was, went. Yeah, yeah, and it probably sounded like that too because it was dubbed. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Yeah, amazing. And then she turns him down and walks away. 
Yeah. After do you, making, do you several... want to fuck? But then grabs his crotch. Oh, maybe not. There's yeah. not enough there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that's the only woman who can resist the uh, the overpowering manliness mm-hmm. of uh, Joe Marshall. Marshall, okay. <laughs> sure, you, you can do it, Colin. You can do it. You're there. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> I, for some reason, that's not an easy one to remember. Because uh, they say it once. Yeah, I know. I think, so Samurai Joe, we'll just call him from mm-hmm. here on out. Sure. Okay, Joe, the Samurai Marshal. Samurai cop. That's fine. Yeah. It's because he he grew up in Japan, right? That's where no, we're establishing No, he didn't grow up it. there. He, would be, he, he just learned, trained there. Okay. Yeah. And learned Japanese there. Well, apparently. Which he never speaks. There's no said. evidence of that, but mm-hmm. again, it's the T-bone theory. He just yeah. told them this. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um... I forgot where I was going with that. So did the movie. There's. <laughs> well, he has these. Uh, she's the only one who's able to like the resist nurse, his the only charms. One that, yeah. Because I think he's got he's got the helicopter pilot uh, is Peggy. his girlfriend Peggy. Peggy, yeah. Yeah, they seem to have a good thing going. But she's also to to borrow a phrase from the office. She's the office mattress mm-hmm. because she tries to fuck everybody. <laughs> yeah. And I he, think in that exact because another one she's like you know doesn't she say like we should go fuck to the yeah she says yeah. we got nothing to do we should go fuck she says that to her coworker yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. that we see that one scene only and then I actually gone. loved his reaction to that like the coworker he was just like oh you and just like <laughs> yeah. because like, she he Stop. hears that all the time I'm sure yeah. based on how this lady acts <laughs> he's just like oh Peggy. <laughs> But the movie has, I mean, where it re- truly shines in its cinematic, uh, mm. you know, um, 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 effect is sure. in uh, the multiple love scenes that take place. Oh, my God. <laughs> because we get a love scene between Peggy and uh, Joe, which goes on for what feels like five loving minutes. But it comes out of nowhere. Like, mm-hmm. they're like something else is happening. And they cut to them, like, already in the middle of it, like. Yeah. No context to and it cuts yeah. out of it, and you're like, yeah. and I can hear Armin, Ar- 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 Army, What's Amir? 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 Amir, I can hear him like going like, well, I've watched other movies, <laughs> and they have, you know, the sex scene. Mm-hmm. So checkbox, I got my sex scene. This is what movies do. <coughs> Then there's a sex scene between the Japanese. I mean, before we move on from from this first one, we need to at least address the fact that most of the scene is just her boobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And her throwing her head around. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. But I mean, making sure to pan back to those boobs. <laughs> yeah. Not like not like a to- I, not like a torso shot of I, the head and nope. the boobs. Nope. 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 And like I feel like it's we're, we're up yep. boobs. I mean, we just watched this, so our brains are <laughs> fucked right now. But um, <laughs> like we are not expressing to you guys how much they don't edit out. Like yeah. you you can feel that point when you're like, all right, it's about to cut, and it just keeps going. Mm-hmm. And it, but that's every single scene it in the movie yeah. like that. Because I think that's that scene with her. You know, it's like it starts on her head, it mm-hmm. goes down to her boobs, and it goes back to her head. And I think somewhere in there, there's supposed to be an edit, Mm -hmm. but the camera just goes and the cameraman repeats the motion because he knows. (laughs) And the actress also knows, like, if I throw my hair like this, this one's going to get used. Mm-hmm. But they kept like the whole thing the whole in, thing. which is every take is in. Thing. They just kept. Yeah. yeah. No, this director uses every goddamn inch of film that he uses. They've That's the same with the on lines. And so, well, yeah. And Samurai Cop's boss. There's oh, my God. You totally saw footage you were not supposed to see mm-hmm. yep. because he's like when they leave his office, he's standing <laughs> up and he's like pointing here. at him. Now get out of here. <laughs> and he holds his arm up for like a good five seconds. And then he sits back down in his chair and you're watching the whole thing happen. Yeah. Yep. And it's like you're like, wow, I shouldn't <laughs> yep. be seeing this right now. <laughs> And then, and then he laughs. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I don't think that was in the script. I think he's yeah. just laughing because like this is ridiculous and yeah. they just kept it. How do I get out of this? They, the director hasn't said <laughs> cut yet. So, yeah. So maybe if I do something, he'll stop filming. And he's like, no, no, he's going to keep filming you. There's a lot of strange, funny business going on with actors who are clearly non-actors trying to figure out like, shit, I'm on camera. I got to do something. Like the gentleman who has uh, one of the lackeys for the uh, gangsters who... Apparently finds his first uh, forty-five or his first gun. Thirty-eight. Yeah. Thirty-eight. Thank you very much. And he loves it. 
just caressing he, it with his hand <laughs> to so say creepily. he loves it. Oh my god, he loves that gun. Wow, and he's he's giving it this look like he's yeah, like he's never seen a gun before. You know, mm-hmm. like it's probably like his first day. They finally gave him his his own gun. It was it's like Gollum his first looking one. At his precious. Yeah, yeah, it really was. Well, Ugh. you're what you're nervous, you know, as an actor or whatever. You're like, okay, what do you want me to do here? Just do something. You know, we, it's like because well, it's Robert Dazar. We're actually looking at. You're it's, just here. It's fucking Talladega Nights. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> but I've got this gun, so I'm going to stroke it. Ooh, ooh, look at this gun. Can, uh, can we talk about my favorite line in this movie? Yes. Um, what is it? I'm going to try and guess what it is. <laughs> okay. If, if it's the wrong house, we'll apologize to the owner. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because this is what all cops do, right? You Somebody says, like, you know, we need to know where the head honcho is. He lives here. Okay. So you bring the SWAT team, well, or whatever. They bring the cops, and they stack up outside. They don't have a search warrant or anything, because that's not how things are done in America, damn it. You just go in. That's right. Certainly America, not 1991. America. <laughs> America just goes in. Mm-hmm. And apologize to the homeowner afterwards. Yeah, he, he goes on that's, this whole <laughs> spiel, spiel to the, you know, saying, we're this is our plan, blah, blah, blah. And then, and if it's the wrong house, we'll just apologize to the owner. And mm-hmm. like, yep, that... <laughs> It sounds that was like a baffling plan. to me. Yep. Okay. So, okay. All right. I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna pose something to you. Sure. In all seriousness. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Wrong place for that. But yeah. Okay. This man has made 20 movies prior to this one. Did he? Kn- was he making a satire? No. 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 <laughs> What's Absolutely not. What is it satirizing? No. Absolutely not. Uh, American action movies. Nope. American uh, stereotypes of. Uh, Police. I feel like there would have been more money behind it if that was the case. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you you need to go over the top if you're going to satirize, and this oh. is not like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not, yeah. uh, okay, but was the intention to satirize? Is I think what he was saying. No, no, I don't no think so. because that feels like that I don't feels actually like, believe that myself. No, no, I, I don't. No, I, get what, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, it was that's, literally just too bad. No, that's that's and, Tommy Wiseauian logic because yeah, Tommy Wiseau no, says yeah. now that the room is a dark comedy right. because that's how it's been received. Right. Yeah. That would be the backwards logic used to justify this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, this is clearly. I think it's a guy who loves action movies. Mm-hmm. So here's. The way that okay, correct me if I'm wrong. The way that he that I think he understands what an action movie is is you get first of all what you need. You need a a, a man right to stand yep. in the frame, yep. and you want to probably get the camera. You know, so you got him from like waist up to whatever. Mm-hmm. You give that man a gun and you, a wig and a wig and you point that <laughs> gun toward go the from screen. Party City. You, and you blast away with that gun, and mm-hmm. then you cut to another person doing the exact same thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you cut back to that guy. And then you cut to, and that's yeah. action. Yep. Yep. Like he loves just like shooting off uh, these squibs or whatever the blanks. Like yeah. that's action. Uh, it's like he can't. Yeah, I mean, they know. ran out of them at one point, obviously. So. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> just clutch your chest. Just, we're, we're out of them. Just clutch your chest. Well, what do you do? You got have to, you have to, in this scene, it calls for you to shoot out the glass in the window. How are you going to do that? Rocks. I'm going to throw a fucking rock. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. You think you were joking. We're not joking. We're not. We're not joking. You see the rock. Yep. <laughs> what, what about when he sings happy birthday to that girl? Oh, my cake God. He's wearing okay. a speedo. Okay. Uh, Colin, I'm going to let you go back to the, the rest of the <laughs> lovemaking <laughs> scenes. Doodle-doo. Doodle-doo. Okay. Feel, feel free to... Which one are we back? jumping in on? I'm sorry, guys, the... we're jumping all around, but it's just because that's just how <laughs> that's this movie, the movie is. Like, well, the there's movie four, jumps there's around. There's four love scenes that I'm putting as the pillars upon where I can tell where we are in the film. Okay, we're, we, we hit number one. <laughs> What's number pillar one, two? Pillar two, I think, is the Japanese guy and his uh, girlfriend, oh, the wife. That's wearing a full-on t-shirt, his mistress. Yep, and then I think the <gasps> third one is uh, Joe and the new the new girl, the owner of yes. the restaurant where the Jennifer? Japanese folks go. Jennifer, yes, I think so. I think it's Jennifer. And then the last one is the uh, Robert Dazar reason why he made the movie so he could uh, have a sex scene on his yeah resume. with the with the, Oops, sorry, the evil I, redhead. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was like, was it the redhead? It was yeah, it was yeah, the yeah, redhead, the, the evil redhead. Okay, yeah. 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 
Um, so yes, there we go. So those yeah. are the, those are the four. So where yeah. are we here with the? I just I was looking at my notes and I remembered the happy birthday part because that yeah. blew my fucking mind. Honestly, like could not believe what I was seeing. Yeah, uh, more than anything. I mean, that's saying a lot for this movie. But like, there's a scene where they go to the beach, they go to the pool, they're like flirting with each other. And then we cut to other stuff, and then yeah. we cut back. They have, they have sex, and yeah. then at some point they cut back. And we've already established it's her birthday. Mm-hmm. They, she mentioned that earlier. Oh, Sunday's my birthday. So, you know, we know that. But he cut. comes walking out of the kitchen in his black Speedo. That looks just like her swimsuit bottoms, looks exactly by the way. It's like very confusing. Swimsuit. Carrying a chocolate birthday cake and singing the fucking song. I think that was foreplay to the actual love scene. I don't think they had done it before. They, I they think went they swimming. had. They went swimming and then they came there back. There were so many cuts back uh, yeah, and you forth. Know what? I don't care. And he's fine. Like, I baked you a cake. And she's like, I can't believe you remembered it was my birthday. And but that like, is like, you but I everything. did. The mind, the mind blowing part is he sings the legit copyright the happy birthday happy song birthday. on camera. Yeah. That's, that's insane to me. That's For those so of you crazy. who don't know. You can't do that. You can't do it's that. Copyright. They can come yeah. after you. But this movie has been released somewhere legitimately. Yes, it's on Blu-ray, guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, <laughs> we watched shit. it on Amazon. Yeah, that blows my mind. There's there. Are, think of all the movies you've seen where they sing some alternate version of the Happy Birthday. It's everything you've ever watched. Yeah. And, you know. But this movie was like, fuck it. We're gonna sing the mm-hmm. the real Happy Birthday song. What's the alternate Happy Birthday song? I there mean, is one. it's but, just like when you go to restaurants and they sing something yeah. different. It's something like, like that. This you is know? your birthday song. It isn't. Oh, very yeah. Long. yeah. Kind of yeah, shit. Okay. Kind of shit. Yeah. It's that yeah. kind of shit. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right. So mm-hmm. Joe is uh, um, on the case and he's after. Well, they're, we're, initially we're trying to set up like there's some kind of uh, the Japanese uh, gangs. Which I'm not going to say Yakuza because clearly, right? And it's not the, mm-hmm. the Chinese triads, but they're at each other. No, they and do call it the Yakuza. Oh, they do? They do. Okay. Yes. They do there's, call it that. There's an exciting action scene that starts off. We see, every time you say things like that, I'm like, where is he going? Because I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know which scene uh, you're talking the about. The chase scene with the helicopter. Oh, oh the early work. on. Early I love on. That oh, yeah. So much. The, the, with the sweet <laughs> van. Yeah. That was a sweet ass van. Mom's it car. Was. <laughs> I think it was probably like the camera guy's van. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is shot so confusingly. I'm like, oh I don't God. even know who's driving what and where everybody is. I thought the guys yeah. in the back of the van were like ATF agents. Because yeah. the one dude was dressed like a police. It's like a sting, right? They're trying to. Yeah. There's a bunch of cocaine in the back of the car. Yeah. And, or in the back of the van. And he's going to make you like drive down to the marina and transfer on a boat. He's going to drive somewhere or whatever. He drives a rental boat, which is awesome. Yes. The, oh, man. The whole side of the boat, you can see the rental company yeah. and their phone number. It was like and carousel like, yeah. boat rentals oh, or man. something yeah. like that. It's if we crazy. were thinking, we would have called them. Oh, oh fuck. <gasps> oh. God, God damn it. Damn it. <laughs> God. Well, I will do damn it. it. I will do it and report back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Michaela's on the case. Oh, I'm really curious. I, really have, I have a lot of questions. So, so many questions. Because like, they clearly just did like the, you know how like a lot of times with boat like rentals and stuff, it'd be like, it's like this rate for like the first half hour and then it like doubles when you go to an hour. Yeah. I guarantee you they did like the half hour rate and they They're were like, like, we've got 30, we got 30 minutes. We've got to shoot this fast. You know? <laughs> Michaela, I want you to call that number and there's got to be like an old guy that works there and you're going to be like, do you recall a movie called Samurai Cop? And he's going to be like, oh, Samurai Cop. I haven't heard that name in 20 years. <laughs> what, are you kidding me? The kids are calling him all the time about it, probably. He's like, oh, Samurai I got a boy. He renamed That's the boat. That's true. Oh, well, That's know. true. That's what happened with the room, right? There's like, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, pretty much, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's what kept it alive. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we got to you know, get through the, the plot of this. Mm, Sorry. The, plot. the plot. Yeah. The plot. Uh, if you could explain that, that'd generous. be great, Colin. Yeah. I was going to say that there was, a, there, you know, that we got to talk about the sequels because you were saying that Tommy Wiseau. Yes. He's in Samurai Cop 2, uh, Deadly Vengeance. You know why? Because him and the director are the same fucking person. They're yeah. the same person. I'm convinced. Like, they they have the same kind of view on filmmaking. I'm for sorry. Sure. Who else has a record long love making scenes besides those two? Yeah, really. exactly. It's just I mean, weird that like I get Tommy Wiseau's like recordly long love scenes because it's he's directing it's him. himself. Yeah, it's and he's him. like yeah. I'm in bed with this you know beautiful yeah. woman. Mm-hmm. I don't get this one. Right? It's, yeah. Because <laughs> it's who's, not him. Yeah. Who's he? 
who does he like in the scene? Is it the girl? Is it the well, guy? I think he likes the know. girls, but you know, it's no, like, know, but it's kidding. still, it's like, it, that's why I said it feels like a vanity project where it's like, <laughs> if it was you, yeah. I get it. Right. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. They go on uncomfortably long, long time. So Joe on the case of, sure. so he, and he's obviously, he's a samurai, he's a samurai cop. Uh, so he's he called Samurai Cop, sure. Right. Okay, but he understands he's back. uniquely suited to chase down the Japanese gangs, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this forms the base intrigue of our film. Right. I'm not actually sure now that I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. What, like the the bad guys don't have like you know we have this shipment coming in that you know. Uh, yeah, no, it you seems know. like an awful lot for a suitcase of cocaine. Yeah. Right? I think it's basically, it's kind it's, of a they're lot. borrowing from Lethal Weapon with like, you know, we know that, you know, uh, Riggs and Murtaugh have screwed up our business. And so mm-hmm. the cops are, we have to go after the cops. So there's a lot of Lethal Weapon 2 in this. Yeah. Right? So because they do actually visit like all the police officers like in uh, succession while they're, you know, whatever, <laughs> making their breakfast, showering. Or hanging out in their dojo. Yeah. <laughs> to terrorize them so they can find the location of this, uh, you know, samurai cop that they hate so much because he's just ruined all their business. I like that. Like, where does he live? Where? Where's his address? Oh, man, it's in the closet. <laughs> That's where I keep my addresses. Isn't it, though? I mean, okay, well, now that we know, you know, in the pocket. It was a good play, though. Like, the henchman went through, like, at least, like, three suit jackets looking for his address, so. (laughs) Then the, oh, man, there's nothing here. (laughs) Well, psych. Yeah. Yeah. If they were, like, legit henchmen, wouldn't they have just tortured him until he told them what it was? Yes. I feel like every henchman in this movie is kind of, like, B-team henchman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think anyone's really A-team. Not a single one of them can actually aim worth a damn. Right. This is one of those movies where the uh, the bad guy employs like an army, a platoon, an army. We're going to say. There's a of, lot of them. Yeah. There's a lot of fucking henchmen in this. And they're all bad. Like bad at, at their job. Yes. They're terrible. And he punishes them all. He was very strict. By making them wear mullets? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh. (laughs) There is wall-to-wall mullets in this movie. But what's the punishment for failure in this uh, this game? Death. Colin, death. By? Beheading, Um, I guess. Well, there's that one scene where Duder with an Uzi is, like, standing there in the parking lot shooting all of his own men for no good reason. the Code of Silence. Yeah. Oh. The Code of Silence. Oh. Yeah. 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 It's this movie's deep. It, <laughs> <laughs> That's an overstatement. Yeah, it's deep. Let's talk about the wig. Okay. Yeah. Hit, hit me with the wig. <laughs> so Wow. Starting this movie, Matt Hannon has long flowing, luscious Mel Gibson esque locks, right? Mm-hmm. It's a glorious mane. They, <laughs> we'll we'll get believe. to the other glorious main yeah, movie later. It's, it's luscious. <laughs> oh. The one that's mounted on the wall. Oh, we'll get to that. Oh, we'll God. get to that fucker. So he's told he's finished shooting. Mm-hmm. He's done. He says, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to cut my hair and I'm going to wash myself of this movie, right? <laughs> he cuts his hair. Amir Sherman comes to him and says, what have you done? We have more shoots to do. That He immediately takes him down. To Hollywood Boulevard and buys the first fucking wig they find, which is a woman's wig. Cle- like, clearly. Clearly a curled woman's wig. So you know, that bad. is not unlike the story of Greg Sotero and his beard it in is. the room. Yes. It is. There are so, there many, are so parallels. many parallels. <laughs> there are so many parallels with this in the room. Yeah. It's unbelievable. But this looks like the cheapest, shittiest Party City wig oh you've God. ever seen. It looks like they took it out of the netting and shook it out and threw it on his damn head. And yeah. they didn't even bother to straighten it or like get it to sit Yo, right. No. It's definitely, they, they are not buying any lace fronts. So that's nope. for sure. Yeah. No, it's amazing. It changes like from shot to shot. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, what? You know, yeah. So There's it's like, one point you see it full on slide off. Did yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That fight yeah, scene. That's you, fight scene. you grab it and it goes whoop. Yep. <laughs> like, you, see, you see it turn. It's yeah. amazing. Uh, what, what amazes me is that it really is like from start to finish, this movie is like flip flop, real hair and wig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The entire fucking movie. 
It was so distracting. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I was constantly playing the "Is it wig or is it not wig?" game. Oh, you can like, tell. I mean, no, it's pretty obvious when it <laughs> yeah. is. But like some some of the scenes. But it's like, more like, "What's it going to be next?" Some of the yeah. shots are so short that it's hard to tell. Which, yes. You know. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, is it? What's it going to be next? Is he going to have wig? Is he going to have right? regular hair? Is you don't know. It's a surprise every Flip scene. The fucking coin. Yeah. <laughs> like the movie itself. Yes. The what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. You yeah. don't know. Is it a, a sex scene out of nowhere? Who knows? Maybe. Mm-hmm. A beheading in a dental office? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> if only we see, saw some of this stuff. I think that was also part of the, like, you know, the appeal of an exploitation movie is like, you know, you get heads heads are taken off. Mm-hmm. Arms are taken off. Oh, yeah. That's the right. arm taken off did surprise me. I'm not Because that's lie. the only yeah. one we actually see. That surprised me. And I was like, oh, there's all the money in this movie and yeah. it's gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was not well spent. Nope. nope. And the guy nope. catching on fire at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. That surprised yeah. me. Yeah. That, I would not expect Especially that. Because it didn't, like, you know how, like, at least in modern day movies, you can tell when actors wearing those like pyro suits, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It didn't look like this guy was wearing one. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, He's that's just what, like lathered up in the yeah, whatever you could, the yeah. Goop. You could see like his hair was all matted down with shit, but yeah, I was no, worried was... about him because I was like, he doesn't look like he's wearing one of those suits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, catch a lot of eye contact with the camera from like every single actor in this oh, yeah. movie? Over? Yeah. And then them like awkwardly like darting their eyes away to be like, oh no, yeah, I wasn't oh, shit, doing that. Yeah. yeah. I look at the camera. All right, you've got a list of notes there. So what? What are the scenes that we're okay? Well, tell well, can us we talk about, about the, the lion. Ma- the lion. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so you guys are you guys have seen those like latch hook like wall hangings and quilts, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is like a three dimensional version of that. It is like <sighs> it's like a like it's like a really bad version of craft taxidermy. I would say like it's a <laughs> they go into this room and there's a fireplace and like the centerpiece like hanging above the mantle is like this craft lion head with a yarn mane. And it is huge. It's huge. It is huge. And it is it constantly is in the center of the frame for this whole mm-hmm. scene. Yeah. No matter where this woman stands, it is right over yep. her shoulder and you cannot fucking miss it. It's like it's a favor to somebody. Oh, it's like, God. I'll let you shoot in my house, Amir, but you're putting my fucking lion in mm-hmm. shit. Yep. You're putting my kid's fifth grade <laughs> yeah. in the art school project in there. I don't know. <laughs> That's the price good. you pay. <laughs> Oh, for stardom, God. you know what it reminded me of. You know what it reminded me of. Do you remember in Harry Potter when they were getting ready for the Quidditch match and, been, and, and Luna, Luna had and the Luna's headdress? Head. Yep. Oh you remember Luna's headdress? But that was b- more well constructed than yeah. this. Yes, like, <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> and it, it, yeah, it just looks like something you'd see at Goodwill and be like, "Who the fuck made that?" You know, it's like, like the humane lion head trophy because mm-hmm. it's mounted on the wall yep. like a trophy head. Gaudy as fuck. Oh <laughs> yep. god. Uh, there's a point where that dude's running away and falls straight up down a whole flight of stairs, which was pretty hilarious. <laughs> yes, and that's kept yes. in the whole movie. Uh-huh. The whole movie. Like, but he doesn't fall and like flip like head over feet. He falls like on his ass and kind of like skids down the stairs, which yeah. is funnier, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he still doesn't have control over his fall. It's pretty hilarious. Well, I mean, this is a movie that climaxes with everybody just going. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I can't. I, I mean, I could mime it, but how do you describe the? Uh, You're shot. Clutch your chest, <laughs> grimace, and then fall down. You know, Stumble Check down, your shoulder back fall. a little bit. Yeah. You know? Ooh, you got me. Bam, down on the ground. And like, yeah, Colin, as you said earlier, people are tripping over lines and it's kept in. Mm-hmm. Yep. My that God. That was glorious. The, yeah, I can't give you an example. <laughs> like, we start a line. Oh, no, I said that wrong. Well, we'll just keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep, keep it in. So the idea being that uh, it feels like a movie with no second takes. Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. They did not do second takes in this. They did ev- pretty much this whole movie's first takes. It feels also like a movie of uh, no permits. I agree no, with that. I don't, no permits. I don't know that for sure, but I, I agree with that. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's yeah, just a, hop out of the car, yeah. George. Get the shot, then mm-hmm. jump yeah. back in, and let's get out of here. There was a scene uh, in the chase scene where the uh, the two cars went down what looked like a residential mm-hmm. street at a high rate of speed. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm like, Jesus Christ, that looks <laughs> dangerous. Yeah. <clears throat> Unsafe. Oh, that chase scene though. Mm-hmm. I I actually really loved their their technique of um you know the person who's driving just yells shoot him oh yeah, yeah. The person shoot. that's shooting yells shoot drive him. faster <laughs> like it was I mean, it was brilliant yeah because he would like shoot no- bang <laughs> shoot bang this is the guy it leaning was a out solid, the window it was a solid three minutes yeah. shoot him yeah shoot him shoot him 
Yeah. Yeah, we got it. With yeah. a little <laughs> bit of drive faster. Yeah. Drive faster. And then back to shoot him. This yeah. is what it's makes great. it more exciting, though. Yeah. It, it I mean, made that's those... really high quality police work right there. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it made those chase scenes in the Wraith look fucking awesome in comparison to this. Like, I we were kind of complaining about how boring the Wraith chase scenes were. Guys, oh. we didn't know how good we had it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about this whole time. I was like, man, do you remember when we watched Showdown in Little Tokyo? And we're like, it's yeah. just not enough. Yes. Showdown in Little Tokyo was fucking enough. <laughs> yeah. It was wonderful. <laughs> well, this is kind of the appeal of watching like really bad movies, right? They give you this appreciation yeah. for everything else. You're like, you know, no, nah, that movie's bad. Then you see something that's really, really awful and you're mm. like, well, I have to at least respect that that movie <laughs> was professionally made by people mm-hmm. who were competent and that their job and knew what they were doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That part when they when they go to eat the birthday cake he makes her and he sits down at the table and he puts his arm on the table and the table buckles under his arm. <laughs> oh yeah. That was that was that fucking was, hilarious. That was clearly a piece of plywood balancing on a horse. Like I saw, it was a sawhorse with yeah. a piece of plywood and a table over it. <laughs> and like you could tell that actor was like, Oh shit, when he did it, and it was like, <laughs> Oh, just keep eating your cake. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Then you know, so you gotta move out. You don't want to move over to the couch because mm-hmm. uh, all your couch consists of is the couch cushion sitting on the floor yeah. in the shape of a couch. Yeah, yeah, the cushions you know, for a Japanese couch style. Yeah, that's what Japanese style. style. Mm-hmm. You take you off think, your shoes and you eat on the floor. Do you imagine that's what happened? It's like we're actually gonna do some set decorating here <laughs> because he, you know, has this Japanese background yeah. that. His house, he would have, he'd sit on the floor. Yeah, he would totally throw away the couch and keep the cushions. Yeah. So you think the couch is like it's outside the the room? It's on the or curb. Like, oh, yeah. Or something yeah. in the, no, like yes. they just moved it out. Yeah. Yep. It's out yeah. of shot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It'd be getting not a single like screen or kimono to be found nope. in this movie. Not a single mm-hmm. one. There was a screen. At the house of the cop that had all the trophies. Oh, all the karate trophies? <laughs> all the karate oh, trophies. Oh my God. Okay, have you guys ever been in someone's, like, house slash trailer where, like, they had all their kids' shit, like, floor to ceiling like that? Yeah. They, like, that was, I was like, oh, God, this feels too familiar. Like, I've yeah. I've been in someone's house like this before. What's that wood wall paneling? Yes, the wood wall like, paneling. Yeah. And, like, literally, like, trophies hung on the wall but are touching the ceiling. Yeah. Like, plaques yep. and... You know, like newspaper clippings and certificates, like. But there had to have been like what, like fifty of them on that it wall. It was a ton. It was, it was somebody ton. was a and black belt motherfucker, but not clearly the guy who owns the house. No. It was like a six foot like championship trophy. Yeah. It was huge. Mm-hmm. They come in and uh, just throw them over. Yeah, it wasn't him. It wasn't his trophies. <laughs> there was- nor, nor his wife, who they ripped her shirt open just for good well, measure. Right? Yeah. 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 There was also that window that they're like creeping around when they're about to like go into the house. Okay, I could not stop thinking about this. I don't know why. But this, this window, there is like eight porcelain like bird sculptures in the window. Yeah. And there's a bird cage a bird with two cage. birds in it in uh-huh. the window. Yeah. Like that person who lived in the house did not know they were filming this movie. I don't think so. Like, I don't that think was just so. a house that they were like, uh-huh. it was right next to the house that they were actually filming in. And yeah. they were like, well, fuck, that window's open. Just go stand under the window yeah. real quick. That person has no idea. No idea. <laughs> nope. I mean, if they had production design the shit out of that, would that make it better or worse? It's so distracting, it makes it worse. Like, you can't, like, you gotta put normal shit in a window. You can't put, like, eight fucking porcelain bird I like, sculptures I in like a window. I like to think like it was just a really nice old lady that, like, someone was over. They're like, what's going on outside? Oh, that's a mirror. He's shooting a movie, uh. doing a really good job. <laughs> Well, it's like they said, if it's the wrong house, we'll just apologize. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think telling. that was the philosophy of making this movie. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Everybody was just so jazzed to be. I mean, aside from Robert Zar and Dazar, Zadar, sorry, Zadar, Zadar, yeah. I heard he died recently. Did he really? I know. Yeah. We were 15. talking to Toby outside. I'm like, Aww. I'm sure he wasn't a suicide case because he saw like the movies that he was like he watched. Oh, <laughs> oh man, are you saying? Oh god. So what am I doing with my life? Do you know that that man has a history? An amazing. Uh, oh yeah, he's a Renaissance man. Toby, why don't you? Uh... Oh, 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 God. Let's see. Tell he us. was a Chicago police officer. I knew he was from point. Chicago. Yeah, uh, I knew a that. A jingle writer. A jingle um, writer. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. Let's see. That's what it says on his Wikipedia anyway. It's too bad he didn't live in the Demolition Man timeline because oh. he would have been yeah. fucking rich. Fucking rich. Because <laughs> all they listen to is jingles. Yep. 
Uh, he was a member of the band Nova Express, and also probably the singer. I knew I'm that. Hoping. I knew oh. that. Yeah, I knew he was also, in that band. Also, and most importantly, a Chippendales dancer. No way! What? No fucking way! That's what Wikipedia says. Is there, like, is what there year? footage of that? Because I am, I am. Like, what year? Wildly I mean, curious. I mean, you can look for it. I don't want to do research history. Robert Desire, Chippendale. I, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No disrespect to the late great Robert D- Zadar. Um, I don't see him being a Chippendale. <laughs> That's dancer. why I'm curious. <laughs> Well, it was not a suicide case. Just like, to was clear he, that out there for fans. Was he like a bartender a at a Chippendales uh, club? <laughs> <laughs> maybe a bouncer, probably a bouncer at the club. Maybe, maybe he worked at a bar called Chip and Dale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it says uh, Chippendales like, dancer. Maybe on his like Wikipedia, Tuesday afternoons so. they let him do his thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> He, he was a weekday afternoon right? kind of yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Also interesting, he was born in Chicago. Yeah, I know he's from yep. Chicago. Mm-hmm. That's, to, uh, that's legit. Yeah. Lithuanian parents. It looks oh like. yeah, because it's Z- Zadarsky is his full mm-hmm. last Yeah, but name, you would think so. with yeah. ski it'd be Polish. Polish. Yeah. And for yeah. some reason, this entire movie, they thought that he could pass as Japanese. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, they said he, he has a beard and a ponytail. What's his character's name? Yamashita. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Chicago. Lithuanian. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like just by looking at him, I was like, "Yeah, he's from Chicago." You know? Yeah, like, I was like, like "No, they got that." Just by looking yeah, at him, like, yeah. that guy's Midwest yeah. through and through. Yeah. Uh, no, I just strange movie. As but a dar, there, strange movie. <laughs> <laughs> As a dar, strange movie. There, yeah. I, I feel like because we talked about how obsessed this director probably is with what well, mm-hmm. has to be with lethal weapon. I feel like he really is obsessed with maniac cop too. And he was really excited to get Robert Zadar mm-hmm. in this, the tagline of this movie. I'm not sure if you're aware is you have the remite, the right to remain silent. Dead silent. <laughs> that, that's a uh, fucking rip off of yeah, maniac yeah. cop. Yeah. Maniac cop is you, you have, have the right, right to remain, remain silent, silent forever. forever. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. It's wow. a straight rip. And the, the posters are very similar as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That, yeah. I saw that, that explains a lot. Yeah. yeah. He, I think he was really stoked to have Robert Zadar in this. Yeah. I think he's a big Mania Cup fan. That's mm-hmm. your selling point. Well, that's mm-hmm. your big star, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah that's why. Actor. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, when we were talking about the, the, the cop with the Jerry curl looked like a like a broke ass Bruce Campbell. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, so it's like these people are not actors. That either is a cop who was like, yeah. you know, stoked to be in a movie, which or, would make a lot of sense. You know, he was the guy that, uh, or he was an actor who's like, you know, out of work, and mm-hmm. Amir signed him up. Yeah, sure, he was so stoked mm-hmm. to be in the mo- in that movie that he uh, Jerry curled his mullet. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was impressive, and then literally ran out of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, that's why it feels like that's a personal choice. That man was a hit on the fucking Sunset Strip on uh, whatever Friday and Saturday nights. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Sorry, I was taking a yeah, drink no. there. So, what else do you have? On we just, the... We're all kind of we're decompressing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I needed a minute. I, I just want you to think about this for a second. There are two sequels to this movie. Just let that sink in. Well, I, I'm curious, but now I'm intrigued. Now I'm like. Where does the story go from here? Story, I mean, story. I'm saying with huge. And I, and I know you're. I know Michaela is. You're especially curious, knowing that Tommy Wiseau oh, yeah. is in. I got second. Oh, yeah. one. Is he the villain? Uh, I th- I think he might be. Okay. And and most of the people in this come back for two and three. Oh fuck yeah! Even yeah. if they were shot and killed, doesn't matter. Is Robert the, Zadar in uh, two and three? I don't think so. Okay. But do you remember that? Uh, <laughs> do you remember the waiter? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, yeah. he's back. He's back for more. We get more of that guy. Yeah. That guy. Well, well, it was sure. such a memorable performance in the oh, first. Oh, my God. He has to be like a uh, Costa Rican waiter worthy or something like that. Somebody, because do they have like Rocky Horror screenings of the show where people go and like. Oh, I'd so go to that. I would totally go. I know. Just because. I mean, that's the best way to watch this movie, I think. It is. I Participatory. Think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I. Oh, God. I'm sure they hold <laughs> screenings of this film. I would all think so. Over the I would think so. Its first, its first theatrical release was a Fathom event a couple years ago. Mm. Of course, it really? was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fathom yeah. events will do anything. And uh, it was um, 
Rift Tracks yeah. did this movie. I was going to wow. ask if Mystery Science Theater 3000 had done Rift Tracks did this So movie. we're really, really late to the uh, We are. This is, like, this is like a cult favorite. That's yeah. why I was like, when I asked for people to send in recommendations for things, they're like, why haven't you done this yet? This fit the fucking bill. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like, we should have known about this movie. <laughs> Apparently so. Holy yeah. Shit. I mean, I swear to God, I've never heard... Yeah. I go swimming in the the, the, the deep end of the... the I know the you do. Cinematic <laughs> I know. I've never heard of uh, yeah. Samurai Cop. Yeah, and there was, a few years back, there was a rumor that Matt Hannon had died, and he just let it go for a while. <laughs> and then his daughter was like, you really need to tell people that you're not dead. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Was. He doesn't. He <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> That's what he was like, you know, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. Just and, let that man live his life. He's yeah. like, He's done enough. He's done enough. Yeah, I, th- I think now enough time has passed that he's starting to enjoy that people mm-hmm. like it so yeah. much just for how stupid it is. Because he knew when he was making it how stupid it was. But I like, think he's finally starting to enjoy it. With the success of the disaster artist, you would think you'd want it to come back around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because look, like the, the room is profitable now. Mm-hmm. Like it's extremely yeah. profitable Or now, even you know? uh, yeah. what's the best worst movie, the yeah. documentary mm-hmm. about Troll. Because it feels yeah. like, I mean, that's like a, a kind of a, it shines a light on the life of the guy who's like this, who stars in a movie mm-hmm. That you know is terrible, yeah. and then it takes on this second mm-hmm. life, right. of being like a cult class. Mm-hmm. People think it's the funniest movie ever made, and then you have mm-hmm. a second uh, career is basically being mm-hmm. a a petting uh, in exhibited a petting zoo or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. So. Yeah. No disrespect to you, fine actors. Out here. Go no. on to the, on the no. convention circuit. Matt Hannon, please start doing conventions. Oh, I have so many questions I need to ask. You know, I totally dropped the ball. I, I was going to look for him on social media, and I didn't. And I should totally should. I mean, I doubt. I, if if he's smart, he's not. You know? Yeah, no, I agree. But, um, yeah. I can think of so many awkward screenshots that I would love to have him sign. At oh, yeah. Convention. That's what I'm saying. He needs, he needs to do them. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, listener. Do you have anything else that we need to hit before we head off to mailbag? I've got one minor thing. Okay. Yeah, go um, for it. The, my favorite, one of my favorite actors in this movie was the cocker spaniel that comes out of nowhere. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because okay, if you no have reshoots. ever walked around your neighborhood ever, <laughs> you've always walked. You've walked by a fenced in yard at some point in your life, and a dog you don't see comes tearing. Up against the fence and like runs alongside of you yes. along the whole fence. Yeah. Okay, so J- Joe Marshall. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, he, he's like Score. he's hauling ass alongside this yard, and you just see this cocker spaniel come flying out of nowhere, run alongside, and that dog looks like it wants to kill him. And like, and then it, see, it's I, think it, I think it looks happy. Like it was excited. It's going so fast though. Yeah. yeah. And like I was just like that happens to me on a daily basis, like walking around my neighborhood, and I was like that's. Exactly Exactly what they did to film the scenes. They like, come right around this corner, and they were just like, "Ah, fuck it, leave the dog in." Yeah, <laughs> we can't go back and yeah. shoot that again. Yeah. My God, the time is burning. Amir, pro- Amir probably thought it was more American that way, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one thing that I will say is that you can definitely tell that it was shot in California. Oh yeah, and there was a certain element of realism to that, in that every single person in that movie was sweating so fucking so hard. Much. They're all wearing leather jackets and so suits. So sweaty. I thought that Peggy in the helicopter at the beginning was crying yeah. because of like just how much. Like, yeah, how much water? How much sweat was on her face? That yeah, just, it just blew me away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, lots of sweat in this movie. That's what I'm saying. Twenty movies in, at some point, you'd realize that, like, you know, they use makeup or whatever. I mean, like the basic. Yeah foundations of the cinematic illusion is lost on yeah. whoever I don't, the hell yeah. is. Yeah. There, there were moments where I'm like, I don't think anyone's wearing makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. I know because there were blemishes on people that like, oh, should you be showing that? You know, yeah. it's that kind of thing. Like, I don't know. But like some of the early scenes, it was like too much makeup on everybody. Oh, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Yes. Fucking Joe Marshall was orange for like half yeah, this movie like, in his but face. But that might have been the film style. There was like everybody was orange, and then they were blue, and then they were no, skin. Mm, yeah, and then they were yellow. Yeah, yellow. And <laughs> and it, and just because it was 1991, it might have just been the height of fake tan. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, it's, it's possible. Yeah, maybe he had it and it wore off over the shooting. <sighs> yeah, who knows? Uh, or you got, we're getting uneven tan. That I helps. think we yeah, need to preserve tan. a sense of mystery for some of these. I think there's a lot of unanswered treasures. questions. <laughs> Yeah, you get to look too far behind the curtain and they just lose all of their appeal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, another one? Or, yeah? nope, no, I'm good. All right, I'm so good. what we're going to do, listener, we're going to go around the room and we're going to tell you what we thought of Samurai Cop and whether or not you should watch it. But first of all, we're going, we hope you pay attention and stick with us through our mailbag where we're going to answer some of your mail. 
So we're going to summon our e- mailman, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He has a samurai sword. I was going to say, that fucking wig he's wearing. Who Did Sean give that to him? God damn it, Sean. You're not even here and you're still still ruining everything. We're thinking that this movie would have broke Sean. I think mind. it would have broke I, his brain. That, that vein really in his do. forehead would have been popping out oh so God. far. He might have flipped the bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, he would have been, there would have been a lot what of yelling. What is happening? <laughs> what is the point of this movie? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's remind everybody how they can write to us uh, on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, uh, via email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram. That's you. At Saturday, Saturday Night, Night Freak Show. Show. <laughs> uh, so Andrew John writes in about Samurai Cop. Oh, and he says, okay. oh, hell yes. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the paper mache lion head in yes. a bunch of yes. scenes. Oh, oh paper God. mache. It, the, yeah, the I face part. was like paper mache. It was all yarn yeah, for the hair. The face oh, yeah. part was paper mache. Uh, B Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, I've seen it several times. It's glorious. Mm. The hair, the dialogue, mm. Mm. the reaction shots. Oh. oh, God, the reaction shots. Yes. And <laughs> now I want to watch it again. Do it. <laughs> the reaction shots, because they're all like framed uh, way high for like. Oh, yeah. So yeah. high. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Nick Hammond writes in and says that uh, based on what we post on Facebook, this looks and sounds incredible. You're not. Was, we'll was, we'll, we'll get spectacle. to it in our wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. It was a spectacle. And Jacob an uh, Jacob Cotner writes in and says, we covered this movie on my podcast, Refund Theater, and it doesn't get much worse slash better than this. How anyone gets it together enough to put something that gets a semi-wide release together while maintaining the bare minimum of adequate filmmaking is astounding. Hashtag goals. Hashtag legendary. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think he summed it up pretty well. Yeah. Was that our wrap ups? Uh, And going back about the faculty, uh, our episode on the faculty, Mm. Raft Production says, oh yeah, Body Snatchers with a hint of Lovecraft. Mm -hmm. Kind of defines that movie. I still haven't seen it, so I don't know. I wasn't here, and I still I've never seen it, so I can't can't answer any questions about the faculty. (laughs) I saw it when it first came out. It was good. We'll see. Now, if you listen to our podcast, you'll know if uh, (laughs) the soundtrack was banging. (laughs) The soundtrack is legit. I know the soundtrack's nineties. It's it's nineties cover band or nineties bands covering like seventies rock. Man, I should have done this episode. <laughs> they killed it. Uh, uh, about our episode on In Time, the movie In Time, Brent Attica writes in. Attica! Says, <laughs> don't you have to go? Attica! Attica! There you go. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> he says, I just don't get how they didn't make Justin Timberlake a believable action star. That guy can move, he can dance, he's agile, he's lithe, etc. They should have gotten him for some martial arts and parkour training before the film. I think he would have taken it so well. Wasted. Justin Timberlake is a good comedic you know, actor. That's a good point. The problem is that movie is just running. They just yeah. run for that whole fucking movie. Yeah. There isn't a lot of action in that movie, honestly. Yeah, it's yeah, really, ran up some walls. Yeah. yeah, the problem is that there isn't action in that yes. quote-unquote action movie. Mm. It's I, I, I get what he's saying, and I think that's a actually a pretty good point. But yeah. that movie is... Uh, an interesting concept that falls apart way too quickly. So, and I, I think he's a much better comedic actor than dramatic actor. I think so too. Yeah, watch SNL. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got. Good, he's yeah. got. Or he's got good t- benefits. Well, I, I didn't watch that, but Wait, he has good comedic I'm not sure timing. If I, I was going to say, are we one. sure that's the right one? <laughs> I figured you'd be like, no, damn it, it's the other no, one. No, I think that is the I right one. I think that is oh, the right okay. one. I think No Strings Attached was the... Kutcher and Portman? Kutcher and Portman, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, Well, uh, Brent also takes Holly up on her challenge and recommends <gasps> All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. Oh, no. All the Boys no, no, Love uh, Mandy oh, Lane? No. Oh, Michaela's saying no. I mean, I love Amber Heard. That's about all I can say about that movie. <laughs> We'll, well, look right. in, we'll look into it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of the movie Samurai. Colin! What'd you think of Samurai Cup? Uh, thank you for asking, Holly. I've been waiting <laughs> uh, the whole whole night to unload on this one. Um, 
I don't know. This is, I mean, it is like, one of the, it's a bad, bad, bad movie that uh, the entertainment value that you have is from watching just like how much they screwed it up. It's weird. When I watch movies like, um, it was Black Dynamite, right? You seen this movie? Yes, I've seen Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite is a capable movie that's pretending to be a movie that doesn't know what it's doing. And right. so it makes these jokes where, like, you know, he punches a guy and the guy gets mad at him. Or, like, you know, a guy stands up and gets hit by a boom mic or something like that. Yeah. And you laugh because it's like it knows what uh, what it's making fun of. Right. But now we're watching the pure, undiluted, like, straight from the jugular yes. stuff. And... It is hard for me to believe that, I mean, anybody uh, could make 20 films and not understand, I mean, the basics of uh, uh, of the craft. I mean, like, this really does feel like, I mean, I used to make um, super 8 millimeter movies back when I was a kid, right? Uh, you know, in my backyard with my friends. I would put those up against this any day <laughs> for being like equally technically proficient. You know, just to say, not at all, right? I mean, you have no idea. You just like you're in love with making movies, and I guess like I can appreciate it from that standpoint. It's like guy saw all these uh, American action movies and the Lethal Weapons, and you know, digested it. What he takes away with from it is like. This kind of macho fantasy, you know, where like you were a cop and so you're like super attractive to women are just throwing themselves at you. You have access to everything. You have this code of honor that kind of separates you from being a psychopath because you're bound by the, uh, you know, the duty or something like that. That's what makes the the macho man different than the the crim the common well I guess not even the common criminal like the flat out psychopath right mm -hmm. because I mean there's that scene with the the police captain is the one that was like what are we doing here you know like mm -hmm. many times it's like uh, the the partner gets attacked by a guy who wants to cut his dick off at one point yeah. and he's able to turn the <laughs> tables on him he's like you like to cut people oh, I'm gonna cut you and he fucking stabs him to death I'm like. Okay, I guess that's just where yes. we're at. Because the, the thrill of revenge, right, is uh, um, more intoxicating than, I suppose, like the idea of, like, boring law and order. Mm -hmm. All cops must have really boring jobs compared to the lives led by Joe Marshall mm -hmm. and uh, his ilk on the silver screen, as seen by uh, Amir... Shervan. Shervan. Yeah. Uh it's a terrible movie. Um, it's one of the worst <laughs> movies that we have watched on the Freak Show. It's like it wasn't funny enough to for me to recommend it. I'll say that. Like I didn't have as good as you know. It's like we were laughing out loud yeah. a lot, like almost to the point of tears. Which you know. So maybe this is if you're listening and that's your thing, then you have to see it. But. It wasn't as bad as like something like I mean, if you go back a ways in the Saturday Night Free Show thing, we watched Mean Guns, which was boring. But this is like it's it it was kind of boring at, at times because it was just these shots of like guys shooting at each other in their mm -hmm. backyard with cat mm -hmm. guns or something. It's like how long can this go on for? You know. Uh, so I guess I wouldn't recommend it. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what everybody else thinks. Toby, what do you think of uh, Samurai? cop without the samurai cop wow um i have so many feelings about this movie mm. um safe space you can talk about it i've never said uh jesus christ and what the fuck so many times yeah. as i have during the one hour and 36 minutes that i uh, yeah. watched this movie um it's i i'm definitely glad that i watched it um and at the same time i never want to fucking watch it again mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. but i kind of want to watch samurai cop too <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and I from there I'm, you see where it goes. I guess I'm all over the place with this three. one. Yeah, um, I actually tried to take notes for this movie, and um, I read them after we watched it, and they just look like the ramblings of a schizophrenic. <laughs> Which is what the script um, looks yeah, like. No, totally. I should screenshot my notes, and we should post oh, it because yeah, they're no, insane. Definitely. Yeah, mine basically say like um, sweaty people um, shoot, uh, drive faster, and seven boobs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Seven. <laughs> yeah, I seven. So I counted. Not, I counted. Not I number. Number. You only saw one. 
So it's a wraith situation again. Oh, uh, was it? Was it the dude's it wife? The, wife. the dude's yeah. wife. You only saw one boob. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Holly knows. Uh, yeah, she's picking up what I'm putting yeah, down. Yeah, I got you. Um, but um, <laughs> no, um, it was definitely entertaining. Uh, at the same time, it was completely baffling. Uh, it's it's an experience, but I'm not sure that I would want to experience it again. Mm. Would you recommend other people experience it one time? Just once, and I recommend that you drink a lot while you watch it. Sure. And probably not alone. You should probably watch it alone. Oh, people. yeah, no, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. It would be sad to watch it alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We don't mean you. <laughs> no, you, we love you. <laughs> Dear sweet listeners, sweet baby listeners, we love you. And brailers. <laughs> and brailers. <laughs> gotta, gotta keep Sean's jokes right. going. Right. You if you're watching here. it now, you're watching it with us, so it's yeah. okay. But we're yeah. watching yeah, it together. Right. Yeah. Just don't, don't do it any more times than that. Mm-hmm. Michaela. You'll go blind. <laughs> he got in. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Incapacitated sorry. Michaela. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a terrible movie. It, it's it's really bad. But And this movie, at the same time, like, I kind of feel bad for all the times I've said that, like, Transformers was a terrible mm-hmm. movie, you know, like because at least like those movies have the basic elements that make it a movie. Yeah, and this movie makes you realize how many like little things that you don't notice in movies, but still make it complete uh, until they're gone. Um, you know, like a three act structure, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, just a, a general sense of character background in relation to one another, and or even their names. You know, mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. Um, you you really um don't notice that stuff until it's gone, like in this movie. Um, and a lot of the plot elements in this movie seem like they're a matter of convenience for yeah. whatever they want the next scene to be or sure. whatever they want to cut to. Um. This movie's terrible, but, like, at the same time, like, I really enjoyed watching it tonight, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it was a lot of fun. Um, You should watch it, so I would recommend it, but only under the circumstances of with other people or, like, a midnight movie showing Mm -hmm. or, like, a mystery science theater thing. Don't Mm -hmm. watch it alone. Don't watch it, like, hungover 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning. No, God. It's not... This is not a hangover movie. This will just, like... Make your it'll make your hangover worse. I think <laughs> <laughs> because, my brain hurts because you're like I can't keep up with this movie, and you think it's just because you're hungover, but it's really just because that's how the movie is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So yes, recommend it for like a like a like an awesomely bad movie night, definitely. And I really want to see the second one now. <laughs> so wow. yeah, I'm really like my interest is peaked. Um. This also gave me a lot more appreciation for Tommy Wiseau's. Okay, here we go. Craft. Um, (laughs) Because, like, I think, weirdly enough, I think he understands people as human beings more than this director does. Mm -hmm. Shockingly, yeah. I can't believe I'm saying this, but, like, you know, like, the dialogue in the room is much more believable than the dialogue in this movie. But not the love scenes. I I think the love love scenes in the room are better than the ones in this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But not by much, but... Well, he surrounded himself himself with people who were technically proficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though he was giving them terrible direction. Right. And, you know, badly Mm -hmm. written stuff and, you know, Mm -hmm. his ego. But at Mm -hmm. least it was like they knew what they were doing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Not so much in this case. He had a professional (laughs) setup, at (laughs) least. Yeah. And professional equipment. Yeah. Uh, I can't... I never would have thought in my lifetime I would see a movie that would be, like, technically worse than The Room. (laughs) But I've seen it now. Um, So I would recommend it, yeah. In a midnight movie or, like, a friend's kind of awesomely bad night. Other than that, it's not going to make you feel good as a person to watch it outside of those Mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Allie, what did you think? Samurai Cop. Wow. Joe Marshall. Um, You might as well just call the movie fucking Joe Marshall. Joe Marshall. (laughs) Samurai Cop. And will you be bringing more movies sight unseen to the freak show? Absolutely. Okay. All right. <laughs> this, oh god, this pile of dog shit was just so much fun. I I had such a good time watching this. I, I agree that parts were just unbelievably boring, and I think Michaela said it best. Basically, this movie is a hangover manifested into a film. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's just you're like, oh, what happened last night? What and you happened? have like pieces of it, yeah, but, but it doesn't you, all add up. You br- <laughs> this movie's browning out. This it's whole movie is browning out. out. <laughs> Wait, is this movie like a Jacob's, Jacob's Ladder scenario? Is like someone <laughs> someone dying, and this is like the pieces of their life flashing before. Their eyes before they die. Yes. Fucked up life. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I just, I, I can't even, like, I can't express. I feel like we've all said it enough. That was, this movie is an enigma. It's mm-hmm. just an entity all in its own. I can't even express what anyone would have been thinking making this horrible movie. I, I feel bad for the people in it. I, <laughs> I, oh, God. I feel bad for me for spending $3 on it. But then again, I loved it so much. It was so stupid and so ridiculous. And I don't think I've ever heard Colin laugh that hard in my life. <laughs> he, I, he, he was losing it. Oh, my God. I can't even remember what that oh, was. Wait, wait, I yeah. think it was when I think it was when the partner got back up after being yeah, shot. <laughs> I think that's what it was. I think that's yeah. what did it. You OK? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm good. Right. <laughs> um, I, I yeah, no, this this was so ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I think it would have broke Sean. I, I'm. But I kind of wish he would have been here to see it. Um, yeah, dude. You know what? I, I feel like people should watch this movie. <laughs> I, feel like, I, I feel like everyone should see this once and you should see it with a group of people. You should see it drunk. Just don't be in your right mind when you watch this. Don't expect anything from it. Just just go into it with wonder. You know? <laughs> it's okay to check your phone here and there on this movie. You're not going to miss anything. No, you're not going to miss a goddamn thing. Because, frankly, we missed... I, I don't even know. I, I think the director missed this entire movie. Yeah, I think you should watch it. I think you should experience it. I agree. I want to watch the sequel. I'm intrigued. Um, I want to come back for that episode. Yeah, I think that might have to be in the future. Uh, thank you, Johnny, New Jersey, for recommending this. It thank was you. a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, please, everyone, send in more recommendations. We are going to continue to take them and watch them and have fun with it. And I hope you don't feel bad when we completely rip it apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope this isn't like your comfort blanket movie that yeah. we just destroyed for you. I did, No, I messaged him earlier and I was like, I really hope you don't get bummed when we tear the shit out of this movie because it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, sometimes yeah. that's what's fun to listen that's what's, to. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what's, if you don't understand that we're going to do that, then you haven't been listening. True. That's what we do, man. Mm-hmm. And this was fun. We're going to burn your fucking comfort. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the, yeah. No, the, yeah, the new catch line. For yeah. The, for uh, so next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we watching next week? Well, guys, Z- Z- is it the time? Is it the time? Zima is back in stores. Yay! So you know what that means. Summer of Canon is starting. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to pick up where we left off last year. <gasps> and we are going to watch the iconic break into electric boogaloo. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. So that means show enough. And oh shit! No, it's uh oh sh- Shabadoo, right. Shabadoo, so, and uh, Boogaloo Shrimp. I think. B- yeah, you're right. Yeah, we need Shabadoo to, we and need Boogaloo to Shrimp. revisit last year's and find out what our street names were. Oh, or we could just come up with new ones this oh, year. Oh, new ones, yeah. new ones, <laughs> new ones. <laughs> All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Breaking two electric is electric boogaloo. boogaloo.